L.A.'s Filipinos, Monday at 6. This is Channel 2 News. Los Angeles. This is Channel 2 News Weekend Report. Good evening. I'm Chris Blatchford. And I'm Ann Curry. Rock Hudson's friend said goodbye to him tonight in Beverly Hills. This was the memorial service he wanted, a private affair. Glenn Ford was there among the estimated 150 guests. Ricardo Maltabon was invited, as was George McHarris. Reporters were kept outside but saw Jessica Walters among those arriving. Martha Ray was there, and one of those who worked with Hudson in the movie Giant, Jane Withers, talked about their feelings. He was a very special human being. Everybody that knew him, I'm sure, ever loved him. He was one of the nicest people God ever created. Rock Hudson's ashes were scattered at sea this week. Uh, last week, rather, this evening's memorial service was held at his home. Well, all the signs are good tonight for artificial heart patient Anthea Mandia. His doctors say he's in critical but stable condition. Just yesterday, Mandia was on an operating table in Hershey, Pennsylvania. His doctors implanted a new type of artificial heart in his chest. The heart will keep the 44-year-old bachelor alive until a new human heart can be transplanted. Today, Mandia was awake, alert, and talking to his doctors and his family. His artificial heart is an improved design intended to eliminate the stroke problems with the Jarvik 7 artificial heart. And... More than 20,000 people attended three funerals in South Africa today. All the funerals were peaceful. One of them was especially sad. At least 10,000 mourners gathered in a small church in Cape Town for the funerals of three children killed in this week's clashes with police. The youngest of the dead was 11 years old. The youths were killed when police fired shotguns at crowds of rock-throwing demonstrators who built barricades of burning cars. All of today's funerals were peaceful and showed a marked effort by police to avoid a confrontation. Although helicopters circled above, all police were removed from the route of the funeral procession. And this has been a day of an, and evening of diplomatic fence mending for the Reagan administration. The effort began in Rome, where President Reagan sent Deputy Secretary of State John Whitehead to meet with Italian Premier Craxi. Craxi's coalition government fell apart in the debate over the way he handled captured Palestinian terrorists involved in the Achille Lauro hijacking. A warm and personal letter from President Reagan appeared to soothe Craxi's ruffled feelings, and both sides described today's meeting as friendly. Tonight in Washington, the president continued the diplomatic offensive at the Italian-American Foundation dinner. Even before he spoke, he got a standing ovation. Mr. Ambassador, I assure you, the friendship between our two countries is unshakable. Longtime Reagan supporter Frank Sinatra sat next to First Lady Nancy Reagan. The fence mending diplomacy faces much tougher going in Egypt. Today, students at Cairo, Univ Cairo University rioted in the streets to protest the American interception of escaping hijackers. The student riots broke out despite tough warnings from the Egyptian government. The rock throwing students were met by lines of uniformed and helmeted riot police. The two sides met in a brief melee at the university gates. Police fired tear gas at the rioters who fell back and set fire to a university building. Egypt's President Mubarak has made it clear he was deeply offended when U.S. Navy jets forced the Egyptian airliner carrying the terrorists to land in Sicily. Los Angeles detectives are on their way to El Paso tonight. Authorities there have arrested two suspects wanted in the Southland for an execution-style murder. It was just about two weeks ago when three men walk into this Koreatown restaurant. They opened fire, killing a 28-year-old man and injuring two others. El Paso police have confirmed that two men are in custody on a fugitive warrant from California, but they refuse to say anything more about the suspects. One of the victims of the Night Stalker was given a helping hand today by people who have never met him. Today was Bill Carnes Day at the Mission Viejo Mall. Youngsters danced and a total strangers reached into their pockets to donate money to the victim. The Los Angeles Rams cheerleaders donated autographed pictures. Carnes was shot on the head last August. He is now paralyzed on one side and is having trouble thinking clearly. His friends say he is, was a genius until the Night Stalker struck. It had just really upset me and bothered me to think that somebody could have their whole life together one day and then destroy the next. 
Bill Carnes is just 29 years old. His friends and the strangers who helped him today are doing what they can to aid in his recovery. Chris. Los Angeles police are trying to track down three members of a teenage gang that's believed to be pulling off some long-distance robberies. Police say four gang members flew from L.A. to Bellevue, Washington, stole $300,000 in jewelry from a store, and then just flew back home. One of the suspects was arrested, and he's giving police information about those others. Detectives say the gang may be part of an organized crime ring using the same tactics across the entire country. And up next, Cliff Morrison with a cool forecast for the weather and a whale of a tale from up north. This guy keeps everyone guessing. You'll see him in a minute, I hope. Plus, an earthquake hits the Big Apple. We'll have the tales coming up. Now's the time to put yourself on PSA, because now you can fly PSA between L.A. and the Bay for only $45. PSA offers more daily flights between L.A. and the Bay Area than any other airline. So we not only get you there for $45, we also give you the best time. PSA. More flights. More low fares. More airlines. Right now, every Subaru at your participating Southern California Subaru dealers is specially priced for the 1985 Subaru Disappearance Clearance. While they last, you can save substantial dollars on Subarus with everything from front-wheel action to four-wheel traction. They're all priced to disappear fast, so hurry to the Subaru Disappearance Clearance now. So satisfaction for you in a Subaru. There's such savings for you at participating Southern California Subaru dealers. Stephanie Powers. London Fog asked us to test their new winning edge high performance outerwear to prove it gives you an edge against the elements. In these thermographic photos, blue means minimal heat loss because the Thinsulate thermal insulation retains heat. Winning edge from London Fog. I believe in it because like my London Fog raincoat, it'll perform and look great doing it. London Fog available at Bullock's. Robin, 8 o'clock. The time is right. See you there. Make this the night. Robin, tonight. The time is right for Ruben. Go and get away. It's the perfect day to say the time is right for Ruben. Has everything. Some of the children who say they were molested at the McMartin Preschool are speaking out. Their parents are so frustrated, they contacted Channel 2 News and asked us to talk with the children. The parents told us the prosecutors are not doing enough, and some molesters are going free. They want the laws changed. And Channel 2's Miriam Hernandez talked with the youngsters today. To protect their identities, we've altered their voices and photographed them in silhouette. This boy says he was molested years ago at the McMartin Preschool. He's had therapy, but he still steams at the thought his former teachers might be set free. I'd be glad to meet him on the street. What would you do? Well, at my age now, I don't know what I'd do. I, I'd probably go to violence. It is a scar for life that will never be taken away. But if you go to therapy, and if you do the right things in your life, you won't, um, it won't bug you for the rest of your life. What I want to do now is tell the world that what we did, or well, what they did, was wrong. And I, that's what I want to tell everybody, that they did it. He's mad. Parents are mad. They see their case against the seven McMartin teachers falling apart. In June, 193 counts were dismissed. Only 14 of 42 child witnesses were allowed to testify. Then last night, parents were told 17 suspects related to the case would not be charged. The sheriff's special investigative unit was finished. Officials said they lacked children who could answer rapid-fire questions, and older children had passed the statute of limitations. This girl says she and her sister were molested by the McMartin defendants. She can talk about it. Her sister can't. Well, when I was little, I'd get scared and I'd run inside crying and my mom would never know what was wrong. The McMartin Preschool has been closed now nearly two years. Since then, parents say painfully little...